this lesson is about that, that, that group in the animal kingdom known as the phylum chordata. Now, all chordates contain certain traits at least as part of their life cycle. Some of them do not demonstrate these throughout their entire life cycle. All of them have what's known as a notochord. This is a support structure. It's made of cartilage. In some chordates, it develops into the backbone. In others, it just stays as cartilage or disappears. They all have, at some point in their life cycle, a dorsal nerve cord, dorsal running along the back. All of them, at some point in their life cycle, have what's known as, as gill, slits, gill slits or pouches. Again, these may develop into something else as the organism develops in humans, other mammals. They become lungs. Okay? They all have muscle blocks, and all of them exhibit bilateral symmetry. This is what kind of sets apart all these organisms and why they belong in this phylum. Now, as we begin to look at the chordata group in a little more detail, we'll start with those chordata that live in the water first. Now, we'll start with the simple ones. These are your tunicates and sea squirts. They may not look like they belong in this group, but they belong there because they all have okay, a backbone in their larval or embryonic stage in their early life, even though these disappear as they become mature. As a result, scientists have placed them in this group. Now, if we move a little further in complexity, we get to what's known as the Ignatha group or the jawless fishes. And these all, again, at this point and from this point on, all of these organisms end up with a dorsal nerve cord for their entire life. And again, you know, they all still have that notochord, in some cases becoming a, a backbone. Take a break here and look at some of those videos. If we continue to look at the, the water-based members of the phylum chordata, what we would get to next are the sharks or the chondrichthys group. Now these guys, again, what sort of separates them out is that, you know, they have that dorsal nerve cord, but that notochord made of cartilage is what stays with them their entire life. In other words, their entire skeleton is made up of soft cartilage, it's actually not bone. And so their notochord just differentiates into the various quote unquote bone structures that they have. If we get to the fish or the osteichthys group, again, what makes them different from the sharks is that instead of their Instead of their skeletal structure being made of cartilage, their skeletal structure is made of, actually made of bone tissue. And so that kind of gives you a brief overview of the different water-based vertebrates. Take a peek at some of these other videos that I put together. At this point, we're going to look at those members of the phylum chordata, or the vertebrate group, that now live on land. And again, I'm going to kind of take you through them briefly in order of their complexity and explain why they become more complex. First, we get to the amphibia, okay? the class amphibia or amphibians. These guys live on land, but what's important to understand is they need to return to water in order to reproduce. Again, I put out a few videos for you to look at from these guys, so take a peek at those before we continue.
The next group we'll look at is the reptilia class. Now, at this point, reptiles are a group of the member or the chordate group that actually spend their entire life on land, including reproduction on land. They lay eggs. The eggs will have a soft shell, okay? But they are able to do all of their life processes on land. One of the important things to understand about the reptilia group is that they are called ectotherms, meaning they're cold-blooded. And so their body temperature will vary as the environment um, changes, which gives them some limits in where they might perhaps be found or how they can survive. Take a peek at... If we increase in complexity ever so slightly, we get to what's known as the class of aves, what you guys would know as birds. Again, they reproduce on land. You know, the biggest difference is their eggs have a hard shell, providing more protection. But even more significantly, these guys are endotherms, or they're warm-blooded. And so they are able to have um, a lot more ability to adapt to changes in the environment than the reptilia group. Okay, take a peek at this cool video about the lyrebird. I think you'll like it. Finally, we get to the class of mammalia. And again, what makes these guys the most complex is, again, the fact that they bear live young and, and they do not lay any external eggs. Okay? So when the baby is born, the baby is born live and basically at that point will begin to suckle with its mother. Now there are a few orders that are pretty interesting with the, within the mammalia um, class. One of those is the marsupials. The only difference between the marsupial, what makes the marsupials unique is that they have an external placenta, um, the place where the, the embryo will basically grow and, and be nurtured by the mom, whereas in, in true mammals that, that placenta is internal. And you also have amongst another order of the that's kind of unique are the monotremes. Those are things like the platypus, which actually still lay eggs, even though they have most of the other characteristics of mammals. Again, check out these videos. I think you'll find them pretty interesting with regards to this group. So that brings to close this, this brief lesson, brief overview of the phylum chordata. But again, the big picture I want you to get is how they've, they change in complexity from the sharks using their notochord for a, a support structure to the fish the, the changing that notochord into bones to the amphibian moving to land but still reproducing in water, the reptiles again, doing everything on land, but remaining ectotherms like the amphibia, aves becoming endotherms. That's their difference between reptilia. And finally, the mammals who do everything, bear live young endotherms, the most complex with a few curious members in there, such as the marsupials and the monotremes. Hope you get that big picture. Thanks.